they have already read no we have not read it so somebody has to read we have read it no we have read it rangada we have yes sir yes i thought we really only okay i'll read each sentence then okay <coughs> so this is shri krishna talking to arjun which in double quotes when has come to the this dejection this stain and darkness of the soul in the hour of difficulty and peril ask krishna of arjuna because as you said earlier you were normal people would have thought that oh people uh, shri krishna will praise him and saying you are so good you don't want to uh, resort to killing for enjoying a kingdom that's very good but shri krishna is doing exactly the opposite <laughs> he is telling him why are you abstaining from your duty and why are you not doing what is this darkness of the soul this we have discussed if you remember okay <clears throat> the same action can be done from the higher mind and spiritual consciousness and the same action can be done from a lower consciousness so when you are killing from the lower consciousness you are doing it out of attachment ego and desire and your desire in that case would be the enjoyment of a kingdom and that's why i want to get rid of my rivals and then you would do it with hate and with great amount of interest in it motive would be there this is in the if you are doing the killing from your at that level or you may also withdraw like arjuna is withdrawing from the lower level he saying no i can't do it so it can be a an abstention or a doing the act from the lower level this would be the nature but if you go to the high spiritual nature if you are told to abstain you will abstain but if you are told to do the work you will do it without feeling any responsibility without any karmic effect on you you will not be disturbed at all it is something that the divine is telling me to do and i will do it it makes no it leaves no stain on me this is the difference one has to clearly understand okay so so that's why he uh, arjuna is in the lower consciousness but of the lower in the lower consciousness maybe it is better to withdraw rather than fight because then you have motives and desires and attachments so at the lower level perhaps it is that's why people would expect shri krishna to encourage him but shri krishna is not saying that you should remain at the lower level you should go to the higher level and do your duty that's what he is saying so where is this how is this um, depression and dirty he is using the word foul it is dirty darkness of the soul how is it come asks krishna of arjuna the question points to the real nature of arjuna's deviation from his heroic qualities he is supposed to be a hero but he is at lower level of consciousness so it is shocking him there is a divine compassion now sir is explaining yeah there is a divine compassion which descends to us from on high and for the man whose nature does not possess it it is not cast in its mold to pretend to be the superior man the master man or the superman is a folly and an insolence for he alone is a superman who most manifests the highest nature of the godhead in humanity so this sentence let's see carefully what is it there is a divine compassion so in arjuna's case he is in the lower consciousness and his compassion is not really compassion it's a weakness of the vital okay that is the thing we, <laughs> we when we are in the lower uh, we feel pity and we feel um, uh, sorry for many people but that is a lower reaction it's a vital reaction it's not the divine compassion the divine compassion can be absolutely cold objective but full of love okay and full of understanding whereas our uh in the lower consciousness this sort of that's why is not in his word compassion uh pity is a weakness of the lower vital this is what said this point of view there is a divine compassion which descends to us from on high from the higher planes of consciousness and for the man whose nature does not possess it one who is at a lower level should not pretend that he has compassion and that's exactly what 
Arjuna's condition is. He is in the lower consciousness, but he is refusing to act because he is saying that's not the right attitude. But he is doing it from a wrong standpoint. That's the whole point. Okay. And the man whose nature does not possess. See, we made a very clear distinction between the higher and the lower. Huh? So, in the lower also there can be a a pity, and there can also be a motive for uh, killing. Because of desire and attachment, I will kill everybody because I want to enjoy my kingdom. This is desire, attachment, and ego. But when you are saying no, I can't do that. It is, it is not the real compassion. It is the weakness of the nerves. So this is what Sri Mukti pointed out. Whereas at the higher level, both the actions of abstention and violence is possible without any effect on your karmic law. Nothing happens. The law of karma is suspended for one who goes out of the body mind life. When he is trigunatita, the law of karma is suspended. Nothing affects your soul, but it affects your body mind life. So that's what it is. <coughs> so it is not caste. So there is a divine compassion which descends to us from on high, and for the man whose nature does not possess it, which is the case with Arjuna, he is in the lower consciousness. Is not cast in its mold, in the mold of the higher uh, level, the divine compassion. He is not cast in that mold. To pretend to be the superior man, the master man, or the su superman is a folly and an insolence. For he alone is a superman who most manifests the highest nature of the Godhead in humanity. So he is even going to the extent of saying, pretend. Okay, but. There can be pretension in many cases, but in the case of Arjuna, he really is uh, affected. He is not pretending that he is higher. <laughs> he agrees that he is in the lower because he is um, asked for guidance, and not only that, his whole body is shaking, his vital is disturbed. He throws down his very clearly. It's a weakness of the nerves and the vital. <clears throat> so, next sentence: This compassion, the compassion of the divine from high. From the higher level, observes with an eye of love and wisdom and calm strength, okay? not a disturbed vital, as in Arjuna's case. This compassion observes with an eye of love and wisdom and calm strength, no disturbance at all. The battle and the struggle, the strength and weakness of man, his virtues and sins, his joy and suffering. His knowledge and his ignorance, his wisdom and his folly, his aspiration and his failure, and it enters into it all. It enters into it all to help and to heal the divine consciousness. But in the case of Arjuna, it is out of his. He has only he he has no power to heal. He has only power to withdraw himself, and that's weakness. In the saint and philanthropist, it may cast itself into the mold of it, the plenitude of love or charity. In the thinker and hero, it assumes the largeness and the force of a helpful wisdom and strength. Okay. The, it has to be helpful, but in the case of Arjuna, it is not helpful at all. Okay. It is this compassion in the Aryan fighter, the soul of his chivalry. Which will not break the bruised reed, but helps and protects the weak and the oppressed and the wounded and the fallen. So, Sremdo's description of Arjuna's condition is a bruised reed. A reed is a very, very, uh, very frail thing. It grows in water and bends very easily and even bruised. It gets easily bruised. That's what happened to Arjuna. He is faced with a problem. He is not able to digest. He is not able to assimilate it. So he withdraws in weakness. Okay, the oppressed and the fallen. But if you are in the higher consciousness, you know exactly how to help, how to do, what to do. But it is also the divine compassion that smites down the strong tyrant and the confident oppressor, not in wrath and with hatred. For with these and not the high divine qualities, the wrath of God against a sinner. The gods' hatred of the weak are fables 
of half enlightened creeds the divine has no wrath no anger no sinner okay this is something which is very very clearly in the gita and the uh, our tradition in the indian tradition including all the religions that we have whereas in the jewish tradition god is a punisher okay he rewards and punishes in the christian theory also it is like that okay so here it is not like that god is never he is not there is no wrath and hatred in him even when he is killing it is out of mercy <laughs> it is out of compassion that he is doing that because that will save him okay, so. mm. it is very interesting <clears throat> ah is, an, an image is coming to my mind just now yesterday i was seeing yesterday or day before i was seeing a um, a video of a small baby elephant which had been uh, injured very badly it had got entangled and the trap that it fell into was bothering him so the uh, people who look after the wildlife in south africa they found out about this um, elephant baby elephant and they came in a helicopter to uh, try and uh, re- relieve this pain so but when they were trying to and for adult elephants they use um tranquilizer darts okay and then the elephant falls down and for 5 6 minutes it is absolutely immobile and then they do whatever has to be done but in the case of a baby elephant they don't use uh, darts because he can be easily overpowered by two three people and that's what they did but when they caught this elephant and pulled pulled him down the mother elephant thought that it is having cruel to him <laughs> Okay, so his reaction is exactly like that. Okay, but it can't help. <laughs> so it is thinking. But they, so according to the mother elephant, these three people are being cruel to the, but not at all. They are not being cruel. They are saving. So it's something so similar. When the divine actually oppresses you, it is to help you. <laughs> exactly the same thing that this image I talked about just now. Very interesting. even when you feel that the divine is putting obstacles in your path it is only to help you so that's a difference when the divine is doing that what you think is a disaster and a, uh, a calamity actually is helping you <laughs> so the divine is out of his wisdom and love he is helping you with violence so that is what the higher level is but at the lower level you withdraw from the violence but you have no power to heal Okay. that's the difference between compassion and pity so but it is also the divine compassion that smites down not only always helping her but always smites down the strong tyrant and the confident oppressor not in wrath and with hatred for these and not the divine high divine quality the wrath of god against the sinner god's hatred of the weak wicked are fables of half enlightened creeds he is using the word creed huh? that means religions there are many religions who think of god as a, a punisher and a and a rewarder that's absolutely not true at all in fable myths okay god's written as much a fable as the eternal torture of the hells they have invented here he is being very very specific about the christian religion okay as much as a fable as the eternal torture of the hells he has invented they have invented they the christians have invented he is not using the word christian but is very clear what he is referring to but as the old indian spirituality clearly saw with as much love and compassion for the strong titan erring by his strength and slain for his sins as for the sufferer and oppressed who have to be saved from the violence and injustice so to the sufferer and the oppressed the divine shows compassion but to the titan with his ego and all that the divine shows compassion through violence <laughs> okay this is a very interesting para how the divine action can change but the intention is always the good of the the action is always good okay Uh, 
usually when something bad happens to us we think that god is punishing us that's right but, but actually it is our own karma which is uh, so what about the karma yeah is it, is it the karma which uh, punishes us or karma there's nothing like that okay so karma is not a punishment it's a learning process if you are in school and you make a mistake the teacher mm-hmm. may very kindly tell you what the mistake you have made or he may be even if his nature is he will criticize you and say he may even uh, make you a little um, or, or he may feel, make you he may put you down so you may suffer but all mistakes are only process of learning na so mm-hmm. i'll give you a best example which you will understand that it's not a punishment a small child puts his hand in fire ignorance our wrong actions are because of ignorance okay and why is the ignorance coming because you are divine essentially and you have plunged yourself into the opposite of your own consciousness your own force your own ananda so now you have to learn how to get back to that what you have lost so karma is not a law of punishment at all it is a process of learning na mm-hmm. now the child has learned that if i put my hand in fire i will suffer so that is he has learned something this is precisely now compare the calamity of the at the personal level to the fire you have learned okay you are learning the process i have to protect myself and become absolutely immune to these things it's all a learning process there is no punishment at all involved but the the karma only puts fear in you no yeah the karma will yeah, karma will continue because the, the teaching process continues right up to the end na mm. i should the uh, divine teach you half way and leave you so the karma goes on <laughs> mm. but what is interesting is that the karma ceases for the soul that escapes from the lower level okay mm-hmm. lower level acha yeah. that's what because he is not killing that is the karma because arjuna refrains from killing also because he is weak but also because of karma also no or no karma is always acting yeah the karma is always acting and karma is the because of his weakness he is reacting in this way okay that is weakness i have a query yeah go ahead you know once there was a man he was a very good generous nice man Okay. And suddenly, he was accused of a murder, which ah. he did not do. Okay. Ah. Everyone knew that he didn't murder. Okay. But he was sentenced for that murder. So okay. So people went and told mother, "Okay, you know this man. He was so good. This that. <coughs> and now he is not murdered, but he is sentenced for murder." Yeah. And mother said yes because in his last life. He had murdered and he had got away with it. Yeah. So this life he is getting his sentence. Yeah. The result of the karma is coming in the next life. Okay. Yeah. So like that is a punishment, no? It's not a punishment. It is not to be seen as a punishment because you have done something and there are consequences. The law of karma is nothing but action and <coughs> result. Action and result. That's all. Sangha, that this reminds me of a uh, Andretio one the place mother has written something okay. about punishment, uh-huh. in which she says that suppose a child is disturbing a class in a class, yes. a teacher I think asks about punishment. Yes. So she says that uh, suppose a child is disturbing the class and that class is uh, that child is told to leave the class. Yes. That is not punishment. That is a yes. natural consequence of his action. That's right. So you. Yeah. I, uh, this is in one of the antrathios. I don't know where exactly. Yeah, but no, but I, it's very real. Yeah, that's exactly what we are discussing. Exactly, it's not a punishment. It is a process of learning. He has done something, and he has to face the consequences. If you don't face the consequences, you will go on and be committing the same mistake, won't you? Okay, it's exactly the same. No, for instance, okay. Uh, in, in our physical life also it's like that suppose i have to learn how to 
uh, operate the computer. I make a mistake, but when I make a mistake, I say, oh, this is what I should not do. We have learned. So an error is the consequence <coughs> ignorance and it's a learning process. Exactly. It's not a punishment. I told you the other day na, about that man who had exactly what Jasmine said just now. He, now he had not done something which uh, he was accused of, even in the ashram, huh? but mother told him to leave. And Nolida explained to him, you remember I told you this incident. Yeah, yeah, Nolida, yeah. Nolida told him to leave the ashram and he said, this is not a punishment. You will come back, but you will have learned something. Because something is there in the, in the inner being by which he has to be sent back and he has to come back. So that is the thing. <laughs> I told you about Gautam also, Gautam Chawala. Okay, He was, uh, mother scolded him one day and he said, but mother, I have not done what you're telling me. Mother said, but you needed that scolding. <laughs> so because they only use these things as an excuse. But those who don't understand this principle, they will say, oh my God, how unkind and how unjust is mother. But not at all. It's not injustice at all. Okay. That is what people also say, that when a close relative has passed away, we'll say, my God, why has God done this to me? Why is he putting this uh, thing on me? Okay. And it can go to such an extent that even if a tsunami comes and kills 100,000 people, it's a punishment. It is not. Each one there is learning something. It's a consequence of their own actions and their own. Yeah. You have to think a good deal about it because you can always give examples where it doesn't seem to be so. But this is the absolute truth that there is <laughs> karma. Law of karma is only action and result. Action and result. Nothing else. There is no question of any uh, cruelty. There is no question of punishment. It's a process of learning. It's the same, na? suppose you want to send a rocket into the space, okay? you make one, you make a mistake, then you analyze the mistake and you find out that what has gone wrong. So now you have learned from your mistake. Exactly in the same way, the psychological field also is the same. You learn from your mistakes. In fact, if you don't learn from your mistakes, you are persisting in your ignorance and stupidity. We should all learn from our mistakes. That's the thing. <laughs> And mistakes can be also actions. Okay, so it's a wrong action is a mistake. Error. In fact, that's why Sivindu says in the synthesis, if you remember, we have read it. Error is the handmaiden of truth. <laughs> because you make a mistake, you have learned something. And you avoid it. <laughs> well, Rangata, I have a question. Yeah. Making making a mistake also is, a, uh, is the doing of karma, right? Or no? Yes, that's right. Of course, it no. Is. I mean, if I make a mistake, is because it is my karma to make mistake, or how is it? Yes, you can say that. Why not? Because you are at a level where you still have to learn that the mistake has to be overcome. You are at that level, isn't it? So your ignorance. The cycle of karma. How does it end? Because oh. whatever we do and whatever okay, it is yes. all part of karma. Okay, it's a very interesting question what you're doing. Your karma lasts for you as long as you are identified with the body-mind life. Okay, okay. since you have raised a very interesting question, we'll go a little into detail about it. Okay, so you remember what I, your karma ends when you seize your identification with body-mind life. You come out of your body-mind life and you go to the spiritual plane of consciousness is level two, not level three, level two. And now you are absolutely calm, quiet and immutable. Remember? So that's the experience of the self and Brahman. But the body and life is going on doing and it is being um, operated by, by the universal force, universal nature. Okay. But you are free. That is the reason I told you why even avatars, okay, they have to get the consequences in the, at the body-mind life level. Now I'll tell you what it is. You remember we discussed also at the highest level, absolutely subtle. At the lowest level, absolutely gross. You remember the gradation? Yes. yes. Now apply this rule of subtlety and gradation 
and grossness down the line okay now can you imagine that when something is very subtle there is freedom na the wind is free it is moving everywhere okay the air is free you in, when you go into 100 miles above space you are free the gravitation is not there in you you are free so at the highest level there is freedom but as you keep coming down the law of gravitation goes on becoming more and more intense more and more intense until finally on earth you have no freedom you are subject to the law of gravitation which is pulling you down and when something becomes gross it becomes very very fixed this you understand na fixity yes. and fixity is law law and freedom are opposites so your question as to when does the law of karma end it starts to end even in the spiritual planes of consciousness for the soul but the body mind life will always be subject to karma always until the supermental comes and the conditions are changed but until then the law of karma will operate at the lowest level because okay take something very very concrete okay what is meant by law of karma the laws at the physical level there are laws no there is no no, no variation the law is fixed that is the reason why science can tell you that 100 years from now at such and such a time there will be an eclipse why because there is a fixity no freedom there is a law that operates and that law operates at the physical level vital level and mental level but as it keeps going up higher and higher the fixity and the laws who start becoming more and more subtle more and more subtle okay hmm. this is the truth so the absolute freedom is only at the highest level <laughs> apply the law of gradation and subtlety and grossness and fixity even to the law of karma okay. the law also becomes absolutely that's why in gita if you go to the highest level what happens sarva dharman parityaj give up all laws no laws will apply to you okay at the lowest level all the laws apply to you <laughs> so this idea of gradation uh, is very important yes tell me but also rangana this idea yeah. of uh, not taking birth ha ah. no more yeah. birth that also is uh, uh, is the way you can go out of uh, karma no that's right that's what i told you that when you go to the spiritual level of consciousness the level 2 you don't even want need to go to level 3 the one who is escaping from birth the ascetic he is mm. free he is free and it disappears okay but then again again if he wants he can take birth that's right as i was telling you there are three cases possible when you are free when the law of karma does not that's why you use the word mukti liberation you are liberated from the fixity of laws in level 1 that's right and when you are there at that level you are in level 2 you have three options maybe even more okay the first option is like the buddhist disappear into where you came from the river comes into the sea and disappears there is no more river the individuality disappears entirely no more river it has become part of the sea this is choice number 1 choice number 2 you can remain with a cosmic consciousness the soul can remain without entering into a body mind life he can remain in that field for many many as long as he wants okay that's his choice in fact what about the apsaras the gandharvas the kinnaras these are all there permanently stationed in those planes of consciousness okay and the human it is out of choice it is it out of choice that they are staying or because they can't go above or they can't come down uh, i think it is choice see it is choice even mother and sister are there in the subtle physical world now and you can contact them and they can help you they can help you even when you are in the lower consciousness if you pray and make a contact they will help you then the other choice is your own choice <laughs> i have reached liberation but okay i have reached liberation but what about all the other souls 
they are still there in ignorance and they are suffering my liberation is not enough the divine compassion seizes you and you say i want to help others also and so you come down and help the others that's a third that's step. what gautam buddha did also no ah uh, i was going to tell the same thing like the we think that buddha also, also did uh, pardon i didn't follow what did you say buddha, buddha also did the same thing no he that's attained true. nirvana but he came back that's right that's right that's right that is known as the bodhisattva na is a it's a amitabha buddha that's what they call it. he took a vow this is a is an attitude rather than a actual historical event it's an attitude that i will not go into nirvana so long as a single soul is in suffering because the souls will always suffer in the lower because there is an infinite supply of souls from the bottom na It's the same. I told you about Vivekananda. If you remember, he wrote to a disciple in in the West. He says, "I am not interested in my liberation. I am not interested in God, the calm, the infinite, the peaceful, the Ananda. I am not interested in that. I am interested in God, the miserable, God, the fallen, God, the diseased, God, the poor, God, the suffering. That also is the same attitude, <laughs> right? But Ranga, the then. it will be an eternal thing right because body and uh, this will turn into i mean how can you take out pain and suffering from body or physical life okay now take one individual okay he is traveling from the lowest level to the highest level agree through many lives now this drama is repeated infinitely what is wrong with that is <laughs> it is repeated infinitely for every soul only yes. at this time so what's wrong with that there's nothing wrong <laughs> no so they have to work infinitely or eternally for human kind oh okay 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 no but remember that there's an evolution and what is they have to done he has made it easier for them na as i said yes. if you if you are you have to cross a forest if somebody has already shown the path and cut the foliage and cut the jungle bushes and made a road it becomes easier for the others so that's exactly yes. what shrita has done okay yes ranga da but since man has come animals and uh, plants survive so as superman also comes human beings will be there no no i didn't exactly follow the question no I, the path is there but uh, as when human beings came animals and uh, plant life is still there right uh, so when course. superman comes the man humanity also will be still there no eternally of course of course they will be there matter does not disappear this is one thing when i already told you before also see when the animals came out of matter life came did matter disappear no matter didn't disappear so now out of animal life when man comes have the animals disappeared no but every animal has a better chance of going into the to take a human birth when the yogi comes okay now man also becomes because he is helped by the yogi he has also a better chance of becoming a yogi when the superman comes men will be it will be easier for men to go to the next level so it's a pyramidal structure and as you keep going higher and higher things become easier and easier but the inconstant will continue to remain matter will continue to remain the whole process will continue to remain but it will become much faster for everybody no so that as long as as long as matter is there there is suffering right yes of course so for for shrobindo or gautam buddha it is as long matter is there it, their work is not done i mean oh, according okay. to them uh, in that way I'm if saying. you want to be very very uh, you know very uh, cruel about the reality yes <laughs> it is true because the, there is no end to evolution yeah so But, it's not cruel it's realistic no rangada uh, okay okay i'm using the word cruel because it sounds so uh, strange na harsh yes yeah, harsh. it sounds very harsh but that's a reality yes 
there will always you even when swam the country they, but those who are ready they will be helped huh? that's the whole yes. point yes there, but there is uh, that is there is one question again in this that once you have taken the human birth can yes. you go back to animal or no no that never happens very rarely does it happen but it does not happen it is you do markelapa <laughs> okay <laughs> you do markelapa but you don't go back okay okay you don't go back otherwise uh, otherwise evolution would have no meaning na there is always a forward march but one thing i can tell you since you have raised the question okay man has got a body man has got a vital and man has got a mind and he has also got a soul but when the soul is in ignorance and your desires are very very strong okay and okay. Uh, desires are not satisfied yet what happens sometimes after death is that the vital being you remember i told you that there is a physical purusha there is a vital purusha there is a mental purusha they are all separate okay so this vital purusha can continue to exist because its satisfactions have not taken place it can enter into another human being to try and satisfy itself or it can enter into another animal also to satisfy itself so we have spoken of this so a human vital can enter into even an animal vital in animal body to satisfy its uh, desires unfulfilled its desires that can happen but not the soul the soul never goes back to an animal level but the vitality can until it is released okay that's what a ghost is a ghost is a, a vital being which has not had its satisfactions to the desires that it had so it continues to linger in the physical world but when that vital vitality enters into another human being that is what is called possession okay it can happen if you have seen that film exorcist as uh, you would know hmm. that that's what can happen Yeah, it can happen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Actually, there is a we mentioned that some souls are lost. Is it? I didn't follow exactly what you said. I think there is net problem. I'll talk. <laughs> I'll ask some other. <laughs> okay. Net problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, she right. said. she said that well, sometimes it is called that the souls are lost what does it mean ah okay okay but that's a misnomer okay okay i want to see what you are saying it is not the soul that gets lost but the soul okay in this sense that the soul is still lodged in the vital and the, see what's the process of rebirth first of all your body dissolves then your vital dissolves this is say chain that happens and then your mind dissolves and you are left only with the soul it goes to the psychic world it reviews its own life and takes birth again but if this desires are very strong okay you are stuck in the vital so it is true that the soul is still ignorant and it is stuck in the vital that's true but i am talking of the case where the vital becomes separated the soul has the power to separate the vital but the vital takes on it existence of its own that's a funny part even thoughts can take on existences of their own okay so the two cases are different ah arjuna ji now i understand what you're saying so it can happen that the soul is still lost in the vital that can happen and that is what is called a lost soul <laughs> okay it ah, is not okay. being able to go to the mental world it is stuck at the vital world that can happen but if the soul divests itself of the vital clothing then the vital clothing continues to live without the soul okay that happens also because i told you these are not the there is a impersonal aspect and a personal aspect okay there is a personal purusha vital purusha is there prana purusha okay there is a manomaya purusha so that continues to exist but sometimes it dissolves just like a grain of salt can dissolve and disappear but it can also remain so the vital of an unsatisfied uh, being 
there can be two cases neither the soul gets rid of it but it is such a strong formation because it is not had satisfaction that it continues to exist in the atmosphere the earth atmosphere that can happen <laughs> So may I say something? Yeah, go ahead. You know, when mother was in Paris and when a group of them met together and meditated or whatever, yeah. there was one young boy also who used to come. And okay. then that young boy stopped coming for a very long time. Okay. And they didn't know what had happened to him. And one day when the group was there, suddenly one cat jumped from somewhere. And mother saw the in the cat's eyes the soul of that man and uh, that, that young boy had gone to war and had was suddenly killed uh, so she saw him in the eyes of that cat that's right that's right i remember that that's exactly what happened the vital of that man because he had died in an accident and usually these it is these accident cases that the vital is still not had its full satisfactions and so it entered into that cat and came to mother and mother saw through the eyes of that cat the eyes of that man she could recognize <laughs> that his vital has come through the cat that's right <laughs> and yeah. uh, somewhere mother has written that if you totally surrender yourself to the divine then your karma gets dissolved that's right that's it gets dissolved with the, the, you are rising to the uh, spiritual levels the level 2 your karma is dissolved for the soul but not for the body man now you have a choice if you want to take a body or mind life again okay. you have a choice that's right so then there are so many different types of cases but uh, archana this question was Uh, okay, it was explained to me, but Archana, did now it is clear? Ah <laughs> uh, yes, Nanda. Actually, I remember because it's mentioned in uh, Savitri, I think, in that uh, glory and fall of life. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, yeah, There's that's. More, that's I just were right. discussing about the soul. Yeah. I remember that. Right. That's true. That can happen. The soul, the soul has got three. clothings the outer clothing which you can compare to a woolen uh, coat and then you have a bunion and then you have also another lining inside okay so there are three coats that you have when your first coat is gone that is the body you still have the second coat okay and if that second coat cannot be removed easily then it lingers in the earth atmosphere in fact 90% of the time the soul that has left the body lingers for about 10 12 days that's why you the shraddha ceremony in india is precisely because of that to cut the link and help the soul to divest itself of its second clothing and third clothing and go to the spiritual level of consciousness the sakit world that's the reason why we do the shraddha ceremony and now it is in ashram it has been replaced by the 12th day meditation that we have <laughs> okay so that's true that's the thing so it can the soul then when that happens the soul is lost temporarily it never lost fully because it is divine in essence that okay? means by yeah. 12 days time the soul has reached the psychic world after 12 days it can go yes or at least it is helped to go from the vital level to the mental level and there again it has to dissolve okay so do some souls like um, uh, mother said that shorobindo said that whoever uh, passes away in the ashram yes this symbol is there on your forehead absolutely you know so <laughs> yeah. would that person reach the psychic world much earlier than 12 days i would think so and there there is no time na so yasmin the question of earlier or later is not relevant when there is no time <laughs> in the higher world there is no time we are still thinking in terms of the physical world because because mother has said no 
that like her guidance is there. Yes, absolutely. And they have paved the way for people who who follow Mother and Sri Aurobindo. Yes, yes, absolutely. So like, is it a very simple catwalk for you forward instead of, you know, having sort of passing through uh, various uh, vital regions and mental regions, like you just um, just sort of uh, fuse from one into another into another. Yeah, I don't know if your passage through these worlds is uh, it is made easier, but it doesn't get eliminated. After all, you have these clothings on you now, and they have to be divested. They have to yeah, be yeah. you have to pass through it. Like, uh, but it becomes easier. Like the passage so becomes to easier. Go, to go to Sri Aurobindo's room also, we have to have the pass, then go to the meditation hall, and then only when you're allowed, you can go up. So <laughs> similarly, you have to pass through certain stages to reach another stage. Yes. That's but right. <laughs> usually, like in a month's time, though, everybody goes into the psychic world. Uh, okay, that's another interesting question. It depends if the psychic is already developed. Okay? But in an animal, there is no psychic as yet. It's only the divine presence. So what, usually what happens to an animal is that the animal gets rid of the body and goes to the vital level and it has no mind. So it can't go to the mind level. It takes birth again. The consciousness is the animal takes birth again in another animal body. Okay, suppose you are a mind, you have a mind, you will go up to the mental level and take birth again. Okay, and that's exactly what happens in very interesting cases of rebirth. Okay, you have a very rudimentary mind and you have an accident, you will go up to the, your vital will go, your mental will go, but then from the mental world, you come back and again into the physical world, take birth again. And that is the reason why memories of past life can remain when that happens, from the mental world, you are coming back again. The question of psyche doesn't arise then. This is what happens. In the case, 90% of the time when there is a uh, case of reincarnation and they remember their past lives, it is because of accident or war or something like that. 90% okay? of the cases. It's very interesting. There are 2000 cases of reincarnation in America and all of them are accidents or in war. Okay. Very interesting. <laughs> okay. Au revoir, everybody. Have a nice day.